For the shell color, we're gonna start out tracing. Once again, try to have your sloper as close to the side seam and waist seam on your paper down in the corner as you can so you've got extra space out here so we can work a lapel line and a break line. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna trace all the way shoulder. Yeah, I'm planning on keeping my darts. Maybe I'm doing a fitted jacket. Definitely need to know where my bust point is, my bust line, my neckline. I'm gonna take that off. I'm gonna lightly trace in my bust line. Not worried about circles at this point. Okay, now you need to be thinking about your design and you need to decide what your break point is. So what is a break point? Yeah, it's where the lapel breaks and turns back into a center front. Okay, so there's usually a button right there of some kind. Where do you want your break point? Do you want your break point to be right here at bus line? Do you want your break point to be two inches above the belly button? Do you want your break point to be at belly button? Where do you want your break point to be? If I'm doing it as a lapeled shirt, I probably want my break point right at bust line. If I'm doing it as a jacket, I probably want it halfway between bust line and waistline. Do you want a one bucket, a one button jacket, a two button jacket, a three button jacket? How formal are you doing? How big are you gonna make your lapels? All ton of those things will change. So for today, for this exercise, I'm gonna put the break point an inch below bust line because that puts my break point like right below the apex of the curve. Does that make sense? So I know my bust line is right here. My bust point is right here. So I'm gonna put my break point about right there, which is about the top of the dart, which is bottom of bust line. That's about an appropriate place for a woman's jacket to put the first button at the break point. I am going to draw a line from my break point all the way up through the neck shoulder extension, and I'm gonna extend the line beyond. How far beyond do I need to extend it? Does anybody know? anybody measured their mannequin? Yeah. Okay, so from the shoulder to the back of this extension line needs to be the difference between the shoulder and the center back on your mannequin. So that is going to be from right here around to here. So it's a quarter of the neck. and I probably will need more paper. So I'm just gonna tape a little piece on here just in case. Actually, cause I've done this a few times and I know I'm gonna need more paper. Uh-huh. What'd you get, Brooke? Nope, just you're starting at the shoulder seam and going to the center of the back. Right, so from like waist point, waist point. Uh-huh. I don't know how you got four. I'm like, that's like the whole back. Yeah, 
is it do you go because are you going from neck point to okay. nail to nail yeah it's like an inch and three quarters Yours is two and a quarter? Yeah. Oh, because you're doing the mail? That's a beefy neck. Beefy neck. I feel like I need a female one. Cause... Are you doing a male sloper? No. <laughs> yeah, you need to do a female neck. <laughs> but if you're doing a male sloper and you're determining that break point, mm -hmm. I have never seen a male lapel. You can take the head off. It's okay. okay. I've never seen a male apparel item with lapels that has the button right under the bust point. Yeah. That button is almost always at waistline. Okay, so I'm gonna work on the assumption that the females are somewhere in the inch and three quarter range for that back quarter quadrant of their neck from center back to shoulder. So this line right here is center back neck. This right here is shoulder. So my extension comes all the way out that inch and three quarter from the shoulder. The line comes all the way from my break point, all the way up to here. This becomes point A. We need to decide how we're finishing the front. Are you doing buttons that overlap? Are you gonna have lapels that work into a V-neck? I'm gonna put a half inch button on it just because I can. So I'm gonna draw an extension that comes up My line all the way to my break point is gonna come out to my extension. If I do that, that puts my button clear down here at waistline, which is not necessarily where I want it to be. I think I want my button to stop here. So if I'm gonna put a button right here, then my line changes. Okay. Does that make sense? So this is no longer my relevant line. So what does that tell you as a designer? Even though the book says draw your break point on first, and you need to determine your break point. And that's important. Your closure plan has to be first because you have to put that extension on before you can do a break point. Does that make sense? Okay. So right where the break point hits the extension, that becomes point B. And then determine what kind of buttonholes you're going to put on here. I'll probably do a two button. Open jacket. Now I need a rectangle piece of paper. And the book says to make it two and a half inches wide. So that's like an inch and a quarter for half scale. And it needs to be the point, the length of A to B. Mine is eight and a half, which works out just about perfect for me. Almost like I did it on purpose. And if I do an inch and a quarter wide, it's the length of a piece of paper. 
and I'm going to cut that rectangle out. I probably should have done it out of white. I might still. Just so that it shows better on the recording. Uh, inch and a quarter, because the book says two and a half. Okay. Because I cut it by the 11 because I'm a Dorcas. Anybody ever seen Seven Brides for Seven Brothers? It's our favorite curse word. Dorcas Galen. All right, it should fit A to B. There we go. Okay. We are going to make a mark where our shoulder is. Dorcas Kalen. Yeah, that's kind of fun. Okay, so I marked where my shoulder is. Now this little chunk up here, I want to divide that into one, two, three, four sections. I want them to be pretty equal. I'm gonna draw just some marks. I'm going to cut each one of these lines up to, but not through the top. And I'm not cutting the line that goes right on the shoulder. I did not draw it all the way down. I only marked the other three sections. And then I didn't draw them straight because I was looking at it cockeyed. So I'm gonna try to cut it straight but I can't guarantee that. In our family, we don't do straight. We only go forward. Yeah, they're about a half an inch. That's what it works out to be. Okay, so I am going to put this piece of paper on my drawn brake line, and I'm going to have the corner of it touching B. The edge of it that I marked on my shoulder should be right up here at the shoulder. I'm gonna tape that into place. Up here at the top, we are gonna spread these three pieces by, the book says a total of a quarter of an inch, which means for you, that's a total of an eighth of an inch spread across three slash lines, which is a negligible amount. You need it a little bit more than that. So just gently spread tiny tinies all three of these pieces. Doesn't need to be enough. We just need to give it a little bit of a curve. Now you're gonna draw in your roll line. Your roll line is different than the break line or the line that we drew to determine our break point because your roll line is where your lapels are gonna fold back on themselves. So right here in the back of the neck, it's gonna be halfway. But by the time we get to where our point B is, it's gonna be right at the break point. So, going to be about halfway, but down here, it's going to be right here. 
that's going to be my roll line. I wasn't bold enough. You can't see it, can you? Okay. Better? Oh, he's sloughing some more. Now, I need to know where the center front is going to intersect. My center front is going to intersect right here. My center front is going to intersect right here at the neck. If I were to draw right along this line, right, I need help getting the lapel to stay in place and to fit to the body and to want to make that fold and that curve to curve back in the body and then up around the neck. So we're just gonna put a really teeny contour dart right in here. So you just find the middle of that space and that's about five inches. So about two and a half inches up is the center. And I'm just gonna do like an eighth of an inch on either side. And I'm just gonna draw a quick contour dart in this space. Okay, so when constructing, I just make this teeny contour dart here and it's just gonna help the lapels shape a little bit more. Now, we're gonna cut this out because now is where we have to start draping. Do not cut out anything on this side. This side of your little extra strip of paper, don't cut out anything here because that's where you're gonna draft your lapels because you don't know what your lapels are shaped like yet. Don't cut out any extra out here unless you're extending it. Like if you think you're gonna have seam allowance right here, you're gonna have seam allowance right here, you're gonna have seam allowance right here. So make sure you don't cut too deep into any of that. For example, I'm just gonna rough outline cut this and it's only so I can manipulate the paper a little bit more. That's my only purpose, my only thought here. Okay, can you see how I just rough cut that out? I left all this paper, I left all this business. I am gonna fold my paper right along this roll line. And it's not gonna wanna. because it's paper. I'm gonna cut out a little bit of my seam allowance down at the bottom. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to put this up on a mannequin and shape it around the mannequin. And so I'm gonna move the camera, it might make you sick. I'll try not to. Okay, so I know my center front is right here. I know on the sloper that this sloper comes right to waistline, which means my buttons are right where they need to be. And see how I base my positioning off the bottom of my sloper. I know that the female sloper ends at waistline, so I'm going to start my paper there. I'm going to keep it folded around the roll line, and this extension up here at the top needs to wrap around the neck. Okay? Once you have it folded like this, then you take your pencil and you decide how you want that lapel to look. So you kind of have to hold it in place, wrapped around the neck. And this is where I'm gonna decide, 
you know what, I think my, I want my lapels to come out and I want them to just be rounded, not really notched. And then we're gonna have them come and I want them to be pretty equal on the back. So then I have my lapel line, kind of a rough idea. Huh. So I just have a rough sketch of what I want my lapel line to look like. So now I come through with my ruler and I measure and I scoop this out and I draw the line really, really heavy so I can see through it onto this side. So I can transfer the markings to the other side of the paper because now they are on the wrong side of my paper. I know where my roll line is because that is folded right here. So now I'm just gonna draw my lapels. Then I can kind of see through my paper. I've indented my paper on the front. So then I would redraw my lapel on the right side of my paper. And now I have a lapel line. Now your piece needs seam allowance. You'll definitely need that. What happens if you want notches in here? Then put notches. What if you want a huge Elvis King collar? Then that's fine. You just have to have enough paper to be able to support that. Now I want you to think about how a lapel is structured. And we've kind of talked about it a little bit in just our language as we're drafting this. We know we have a roll line at which point the lapel folds. We know we had to drape it on the mannequin and we drew on the wrong side, which to me gives me some hints about what other pattern pieces I might need here. When this is on the body and this is the right side of your fabric and this is showing to the outside, which part of the lapel is showing to the outside? folds on the roll line, which means you're now seeing the wrong side of the fabric. So what do you need? You need a facing and your facing has to match your, la your lapel. Okay. So if I'm looking here at fabric, we'll look at the side that doesn't have a tag on it. Okay. I've got my dart. I've got my dart, I've got my arms, I've got my shoulder. I've got my neck seam that's back here that wraps around the back. You can see my fold line. You can tell my break point, you can see my lapel. But when it's on the body, it's gonna be folded this way. And this is the side you see. So you need to make sure that this is the right side of fabric. So I made a facing that is just the size of the lapel and structure for my buttons.